What's up guys? In today's Tech Gear Talk, we're gonna look at the DJI Phantom 4 Pro and talk about why it's one of the best prosumer drones on the market. So this drone was recently released by DJI and it's identical in specs to the Phantom 4 Pro, the white version. And the only real difference is that the drone itself, as well as the remote and even the batteries, have this really nice uh, gunmetal gray or matte black finish to them. So on top of it having just killer specs, it's also one of the cooler looking drones you're gonna see. My goal with every product review is to give you an overview of the features of the product, but in a way that really relates to real life use. If you find this video helpful, please let me know by giving it a like, leaving a comment, and then hitting the subscribe and notification buttons for more drone and tech reviews. We'll get into the specs in a little more detail later on, but I'd like to go over some highlights first. If you're familiar with the white DJI Phantom 4, then you'll see that the specs are exactly the same. You can actually use the battery and charger from the white version with the Obsidian version. So technically this review applies to both models. Okay, so let's take a look at some highlights. The Phantom 4 Pro has a one inch 20 megapixel CMOS sensor and the gimbal stabilized camera can shoot video at 4K at up to 60 frames per second. Flight autonomy with redundant sensors actually provide you five directions of obstacle avoidance. Um, it has a top speed of 45 miles per hour in sports mode. There are a bunch of intelligent flight modes and with each fully charged battery, you can get up to 30 minutes of flight time. There are two versions that you can buy and the plus model actually comes with a controller with a 1080p display built right into it. All right, so let's look at this drone in a little bit more detail and I'm gonna get into the things that I take into consideration when I make a buying decision about a drone. If you do end up getting this drone or any of the accessories, it would mean a lot to me if you used one of the affiliate links in the description. It doesn't cost you anything and then it helps support my channel and lets me get more products and then put on more reviews. So thank you in advance. Okay, so let's start out by looking at the construction and build quality of the Phantom 4 Pro. I think it's a super well-made drone. The body is sturdy and the build quality is really nice. The hull has been updated from the previous Phantom 4 and it now features a magnesium alloy construction which increases rigidity and reduces weight. And those are two really important things because we wanna reduce the amount of vibration and movement that's transferred into the gimbal and then ultimately into the camera so that it doesn't affect the image quality. And naturally, a lighter drone means longer flight time. And of course, the Phantom 4 Pro uses brushless motors, which have super long lifespan, are powerful, efficient, and they help keep the drone and camera leveled. The next thing I wanna look at is size and portability. I consider this to be a medium-sized consumer drone, and it has a diagonal measurement of 14 inches without the props. And with the props, it's got a diagonal measurement of 23 and a half inches. Now the props are super easy to install. You literally just press them down and twist. And for me, it fits right in between my Inspire One Pro and Mavic Pro as far as size and portability go. It definitely doesn't get as small as the Mavic Pro because the body is bigger and the legs don't fold in. And on the other side, it's much easier and faster to deploy than my Inspire One Pro because the camera and gimbal are always attached and are ready to go. Okay, next I wanna talk about battery life. And if you've ever flown any type of drone, you know that battery life is super important. Obviously, you wanna fly the drone and be able to take pictures or shoot video for as long as possible without having to land it and switch out batteries. The Phantom 4 Pro has a battery that gives you up to 30 minutes of flight time which is actually pretty long. And I always recommend that you buy extra batteries regardless of what drone you end up buying just so that you can extend your flight time. So for example, I have two extra batteries for my Mavic Pro and I have three extra batteries for my Inspire One Pro because I never wanna miss a shot in a situation where I ran out of battery life. Now DJI also used an advanced battery management system to help prevent the battery from overcharging and overdraining. When you store these batteries long-term, they'll actually discharge some of the power to maintain good health. If you do end up getting extra batteries, you may wanna consider getting a charging hub. What the hub will let you do is you can put all your batteries on it and then it will charge them in sequence. So as soon as it's done charging the first one, it'll move on to the second one and then the third one. And that prevents you from having to do that yourself with a provided charger where you can only fit one battery. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the transmitter. The Phantom 4 Pro uses essentially the same size transmitter as the Inspire One Pro. And some people may think that this is a little bit big and I'm sure 
that DJI could make it a little bit smaller if they wanted to. Personally, I find that it's really comfortable to hold and operate, and the upside of using a larger transmitter is that it has a larger battery, so you get much longer flight time than you would from a smaller controller. Now, I actually have the Plus model that comes with a built-in five and a half inch super bright 1080p display. And that helps overcome some of the glare issues that you get when you try to fly your drone out in on a very bright day. And the transmitter comes with the DJI app already installed, as well as some basic Android apps like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a browser. Now, I really like the fact that I don't have to use my cell phone or my iPad because it's one less thing that I have to worry about charging. So obviously the screen, because it's connected to the transmitter, they charge at the same time. It's very standard DJI transmitter operation. You hit the power button once to see the current charge level, or you can tap it and then hold it down, and then the transmitter turns on. There's also an indicator light here letting you know whether the transmitter is currently connected to the drone or not. Now you can see that it's red, meaning it's not connected. If it was connected, it would be green. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this new camera because this is an area of huge improvement over the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4 Plus actually has a one inch 20 megapixel CMOS sensor that's almost four times larger than the one that was used on the Phantom 4. And I don't wanna go into too much detail talking about camera sensors, but I'm just gonna tell you that a larger sensor means better image quality. And the reason for that is that a larger sensor is actually able to use more information to create an image or video with better details, better dynamic range, and better low light performance. And this isn't just true for drone cameras, it's true for every camera. So if you're interested in better image quality, always look at sensor size before you look at things like resolution or the number of pixels. This camera can record at 4K at up to 60 frames per second. And it can record full HD or 1080p at up to 120 frames per second which is super nice if you wanna have really nice, smooth, slow motion. What's really nice about shooting 4K is that if your final output is at 1080p, you can actually reframe and crop your shot in post-production and then get exactly what you want. I don't wanna confuse you too much. If you have questions about what that means, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll go into it in a little more detail. On the side of the drone, you'll see a memory card slot and that's where the micro SD card goes. The Phantom 4 Pro comes with a 16 gigabyte card and you might wanna pick up a bigger card, especially if you're getting extra batteries or if you're shooting in 4K. And it's always a good idea to get a fast micro SD card, especially if you're gonna shoot 4K. And I'll put some links in the description to some cards that I use that I really like. Make sure that when you put the micro SD card in the drone, you do it upside down. It's a little counterintuitive, but you don't wanna get it stuck in there going the wrong way. Now, one last thing that aerial photographers are really gonna like is that this camera actually has a mechanical shutter. And the reason why that's really important is that a mechanical shutter eliminates the rolling shutter effect that you get when you're using an electronic shutter and you're trying to photograph either a fast moving object or when the drone is flying fast. Let's talk a little bit about the gimbal. The Phantom 4 Pro Obsidian gimbal has an updated metallic color schema and I think it looks really nice. It does a great job at keeping the camera from vibrating and it gives you really nice video footage and sharp pictures. So one of the things that I wanted to mention, it's not a big deal, but the cable that leads from the camera to the body of the drone itself is exposed. And that makes it a little vulnerable and it's possible they would get damaged if you flew into branches or something like that. Now, of course, you can avoid that by just not flying into the tree in the first place, but you know, nobody's perfect. I did read one review online somewhere where someone said that the camera was hitting this cable uh, and it was causing the camera to malfunction or not stay level, uh, but that has never been my experience. Um, I've had no problems with that whatsoever. Let's talk a little bit about the GPS connection. The Phantom 4 Pro has a dual GPS called GLONASS, which uses both American and Russian satellites and gives you upwards of 15 to 20 satellites. And I haven't run into any issues where I lost satellite connection with this drone. It has happened to me a couple of times with my Inspire 1 Pro. 
uh, but never with this drone, so I'm super happy about that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some intelligent flight modes. Like many of the DJI drones, the Phantom 4 Pro comes with some awesome intelligent flight modes. You can use draw to actually draw a path on the screen and the drone will follow the path that you drew. You can use active track to select a subject on the screen and then when you hit go, the Phantom 4 Pro will actually follow it in whatever distance you have it set up to and you can actually circle around it. That's a super cool feature. There are a whole bunch of other ones, but I don't want this video to get too long. I can do another video about just intelligent flight modes if you're interested. So again, just let me know in the comment section below. And I'll actually put a link in the description to where you can get some more information about the other modes. I do wanna highlight the improved return to home feature on the Phantom 4 Pro. It actually tracks and records the flight path and then it's able to return home while avoiding obstacles if you ever lose connection with the transmitter or if you just lose sight of the drone and you wanna use the return to home feature. All right, so I just mentioned obstacle avoidance, so let's talk a little bit more about the sensors and obstacle avoidance that's provided by the Phantom 4 Pro. So in addition to the front-facing sensors on the Phantom 4, there are now identical sensors on the back and that helps save you from backing up into an object. Now there are also infrared sensors on both sides, but they're not the same as the sensors that are on the front and on the back. They do a pretty good job, but they don't operate in every flight mode, and it is still possible to crash when you're going to the side, so just be a little bit careful. I wanna take a moment to talk about obstacle avoidance. I always look at these types of features as insurance, rather than something that I blindly rely on. It's a super nice feature to have, and then at the same time, I do everything in my power to avoid having to use them in order to prevent an accident. Okay, next let's cover the flight performance and the range. As far as flight performance, the Phantom 4 Pro is awesome. It's super responsive, it's fast, and it's really easy to control. It has a top rated speed of 45 miles an hour, and that's if you're in sport mode. And that of course assumes that there is no wind at all. So if there is wind and you're flying with the wind, you can go even faster than that. Now that should be plenty fast for what most people need. I rarely find that I need any of my drones to fly faster than they can. I've actually used some of my drones to follow cars or boats and I think 45 miles an hour is plenty fast for again, what most people are ever gonna need. What's more important to me is that you can fly 31 miles an hour with full multi-directional obstacle avoidance. That means that even if you're performing fairly high speed maneuvers, the drone is still able to avoid obstacles. And again, I think that's a big plus. As far as range goes, the Phantom 4 uses DJI's upgraded Lightbridge HD video transmission system. And this system uses time division multiplexing, which lets you send controller signals and receive video transmission signals at the same frequency. And the Phantom 4 Pro constantly evaluates local signal levels, and then it chooses the transmission frequency with the lowest level of interference. Now that may be a whole bunch of technical info that you're not interested in, but basically what it means is that this drone has a maximum transmission range of up to 4.3 miles. The connection is super solid and you don't need any extenders or modifications. But of course, let's not forget that that range assumes ideal flying conditions and perfect line of sight. Now, I'm not someone who likes to fly the drone that far away from me anyways. I'm a pretty conservative and safe pilot. And of course, as with every drone, you should always obey the flight rules that apply in the area where you're piloting. Okay, so I think the Phantom 4 Pro is an awesome drone. I think it's a great choice for anyone who's looking for a mid-sized prosumer drone that does a great job in both photography and video. The camera can shoot 20 megapixel images, 4K video at up to 60 frames per second, and full HD or 1080p at up to 120 frames per second for even more impressive slow motion. A flight autonomy with redundant sensors give the Phantom 4 Pro five directions of obstacle avoidance and helps prevent accidents. It has a top speed of 45 miles an hour in sports mode and a maximum control range of 4.3 miles. This drone has a ton of intelligent flight modes and batteries that offer up to 30 minutes of flight time. If you do choose to go with the Plus model, the remote will come with a super bright built-in 1080p display, which means that you don't have to use your cell phone or a tablet. The Phantom 4 Pro, both the white and obsidian models, uh, currently sell for $1,499, and the Plus models sell for $1,799. 
I'll put links in the description for both. And there are always promotions and specials and discounts going on. And those links will always be updated with the lowest prices. I really hope this video gave you a good overview of the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. If it did, let me know by giving it a like, tweet it, share it, and then hit the subscribe and notification buttons. You're gonna always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. Good luck and see you soon.